Hello, I hope you're all doing well. The Land of Morning Light added a ton of amazing notes to the game, and along with the recent worker update, it's as good as time as any to start building or extending your worker empire. A worker empire can be a great source of passive income or materials to fuel your life skilling. Though if you're new to the worker system or it's been a while since you touched your empire, chances are you are just a little overwhelmed by all the different mechanics and don't know where to start. So I thought I'd give you a quick top 10 list to get you started with a few strong notes that that you can then expand on. And as we progress through the ranking, I'll be explaining the basics of the worker system and catch you up to speed with the latest changes. Regarding the ranking, I will be including notes that give the most money per day per contribution point, that is, if you sold all the materials to the market. Although instead of selling the materials on the market, you could also process them to generate extra money. But without further ado, let's get started. At number 10, we have Honglem Base in the Land of Morning Light. The reason this note is in the top 10 list is it produces Bracken, an item used to cook Odolita meals, and it's in pretty high demand as you can see. This note is considered a farming note, and these notes also have a small chance to drop this item, the Farmer Sack, which gives random fruits for alchemy. To get a worker on this note, we first have to connect the node to a city, and ideally we want to find the cheapest connection. We can get a direct connection from Beard County, costing us only one contribution point, and then we have to invest another point into the actual production node for a total of 2 CP. By the way, if you have a value pack running, you can invest into nodes remotely on the map, else you will need to physically walk there and talk to the node manager. So all we need to do now is to rent lodging, hire a worker at the work manager, and then send him to the node. And since I assume a lot of you are new or returning players, I just want to throw in a small refresher on how to do these things. Starting off with lodging, you want to go to the town view on the map and rent a house as lodging. Different houses will have different deals for lodging. Here's one that gives one lodging for 1 CP and this one over here gives two lodging for 1 CP. So it's a better deal. But the best deal is actually hidden away. This is one of BDO's many secrets and I'm gonna share it with you. Sometimes you'll find additional housing outside of town, and here in Duckerby Forest you can find four additional houses that all count towards Dalboil Village. And this house over here has an insane deal for lodging, four lodging for one CP. So now that we have plenty of lodging, we have to hire a worker, you can do that at the work manager in town. The way this works is that you spend energy to roll and he'll offer you different workers from different tiers. In terms of what worker you want to choose, I'd say if you're just starting out, go for skilled or above, and if you're a bit more established and have more energy to roll, I'd go with professional or above. Also, you want to make sure to use the auto roll function, it's a fairly recent feature and oh my god, it's so much more convenient than manually clicking your energy away. And once you got your worker, you can send him to the node. For this note, we're gonna be faced with a little challenge, because we could send a worker from either Beard County or Dalbale Village. And in these cases, you wanna head to the menu where you send the worker and check which one has the shortest distance to the node. Here, if I select my Dalbale worker, you can see the distance is 1.8k, and from Beard County it's 3.7k, so I'm gonna send my worker from Dalbale Village. And he's on his way, look at him go. Alright, let's move on to number 9. And this note is actually pretty close. In fact, it's right next door. Honglem Base has another note, this time a lumbering note that gives pine timber and pine sap. Pine timber can be processed into plywood, which is used to make Serendia timber crates, or you can just sell it on the market. The other material, pine sap, is a pretty valuable ingredient in alchemy. And this note is considered a lumbering note, and these kinds of notes have random tree stuff as a lucky drop. And by the way, all types of notes have their own lucky drops, as you can see here. That was one of the major additions from the worker update. And just like the other note, we want to send a worker from Dalbiel Village to get the shortest travel distance. Now, since I have a few workers to select from, the price question is, which type of worker should we send? So here I have three kinds of workers, Dokebi, Shellfolk and Dolzwe. But if you look past the fancy names, they're essentially goblins, giants and humans, which you may know from the old world. Each worker has a unique trait. Goblins have high movement speed and work speed, so they will move to the node faster and complete it in less time. Giants have low work speed and movement speed, but after the recent worker update, they have an inbuilt resource bonus of 68%. And humans have a high luck stat, but that's something we'll get into later in the ranking because it's peak BDO spaghetti mechanics. But for this particular node, we would want to use a goblin type because of its high movement speed. That's because the node is quite far from town. 
By the way, they changed the max level in Far Artisans, it's now level 40, at which point I will get a special skill where they can deposit the node materials into any town of your choosing. That's an amazing skill and really reduces the amount of time you have to spend managing your materials. Now let's move on to number 8. This time we're going to Shaka 2 in the desert. Here we find two fig nodes, and I'm just gonna bunch them together as number 8, because if you take one, you might as well take the other. The top level node costs 2 CP, and then the production nodes will cost you 1 CP each. And figs are pretty in-demand materials, because they are used to cook fig pie and then Valencia meals, which is used for imperial cooking boxes. And because they are so in-demand, they sell for a decent chunk on the market. So this node is a great pickup whether you plan to cook Valencia meals or just want to sell the materials. Alright, moving on to number 7, and we stay in the desert, this time going over to Valencia City with a date palm node right outside of town. Date palm is used in Valencia meals just like fix. By the way, once you have invested into this node, you can actually grab another date palm node for cheap over at Erdel Farm. And part of the reason these nodes are so good is that they're extremely close to town, so it makes sense to send a giant because he doesn't have to travel for long and his resource bonus will end up overtaking the goblin. Now I know I'm glossing over a lot of details here, and worker mechanics are actually quite in depth, so in depth that we're gonna look at them in a separate video. I'm really excited for this video actually. For now all you have to know is that as a general rule of thumb, if a node is close to town, a giants will be best because of their resource bonus, and if the node is far from town, goblins will be better because of their high movement speed. Now you may ask, well what about humans? And for that we're gonna have to look at the next node in the ranking. So moving on to number 6, we have an OG excavation node next to Heidel, the Lund farm ruins. The node itself gives a bunch of trash items with the sole purpose of being vendored, and the main gig are these two items, Trace of Savagery and Trace of Hunting. They're used in alchemy and are pretty valuable, going for 100k up to 200k on the market. So this is where the luck stat of the worker comes in. And you may think that the trash items are the regular loot and the traces are the lucky drops, but it's quite different. Everything you see here is in the regular loot table of the node, and the lucky drop is a separate item, the archaeologist's sack, that if opened will give you random traces. And the way this works is, each time the worker completes the node, he has a chance to get the items from the lucky loot table in addition to the regular loot table and a worker with high luck, like the human type, will get us the most of these lucky drops. But that doesn't necessarily mean he's the best worker for this node, let me show you something. In Heidel I have a human and a goblin worker, the human takes about 2 hours to complete the node. The goblin on the other hand takes 1 hour of 20 minutes, so he's about 50% faster. And the human might bring in more random traces to lucky procs, but the goblin will bring in more overall traces, and especially the traces we want from the node and not random traces. So for excavation nodes, you ideally want to use a goblin, and human is only the second choice. Alright, moving on to number 5. This one's another OG node. The chicken node at Batali Farm next to Velia. It gives chicken meat, which you can use to make worker food, and eggs used to cook meals, for example Balanas meal, and that makes it one of the best nodes to pick up if you're trying to get into cooking. There's also the chicken node at Finto Farm. These two nodes give identical items, so I'm just gonna bunch them together into rank 5. Alright, we've been on the main continent for quite a while now, and I think it's about time we move back to the land of morning light, because at number 4 we have a lumbering node in a new region. The node is called Bari Forest and gives cedar timber and spirit's leaf. Cedar timber is used to make coffee and crates and spirit's leaf is used in alchemy, and since the node is so far from town, the best worker would be a goblin type or dockerby as they're called here in this region. Now each time the worker completes the node, he will consume one stamina, and when he runs out of stamina, he will stop working and goblins tend to have really low stamina, so in theory that's a problem. But PA recently added an amazing feature to get rid of that problem. You can now auto-feed your workers. For that you want to bring up the worker menu and then press recover all and here toggle the worker auto-recovery button. Now the game will automatically use worker food that you have in your family inventory to feed your workers. And you can put items in your family inventory through this button in your normal inventory. So workers running out of stamina will not be an issue. 
And with this we have finally reached the top 3. For number 3 we will move back to Valencia, this time over to the Nutmeg node at San Grand Bazaar. And what a surprise, another farming node in Valencia to supply materials for Valencia meals. It's almost like cooking materials are in high demand and that's why most of the top nodes are cooking related. Also by the way, right next door is a secret OP node, Kaposha Mining, which gives opals and you may know it from another video of mine. I consider this node to be the secret number one node in the game. But but that's only if you process the opals. And as I said, I don't take processing into account for this ranking. But even at face value, this node would be a runner up at number 11 in the ranking, so it's a good pickup either way. Now, moving on to number 2, we have Lumberjack's Rest down at Trent. It's another timber node, and we get cedar timber, spirit's leaf, and a bunch of tree stuff. It's another cheap node that is close to town, doesn't cost a ton of CP and has valuable resources, so the combination of these puts it firmly into the number 2 spot. But to get the number 1 spot, it just takes a little bit more than that. For this one, we're gonna do one last trip to the new region. Here at Beard County you can find not one, but three absolutely amazing nodes. They give rice, napa cabbage and radish. These three materials all go into the same cooking recipe, the Beard County Cookbub, so I decided to bunch them together so that not two spots in the ranking are taken up by what is essentially the same node. By the way, the Beard County is a new recipe that goes into a guru box and if you get the materials from the nodes, this meal is amazingly simple and really good profit. And if you want to know more, I have another video where I talk about the new meals. So as you can see, the materials for this node are in high demand and sell for quite a lot on the market. But there's also something really special about these nodes. First of all, as far as I know, these are the only nodes in the game that sit right inside a town. As you can see here, the top level node is the town itself that is already invested in by default. And that makes them not only the cheapest nodes, but also the nodes that are closest to town in the whole game. And whether you plan to cook the materials or just sell them, these nodes are a must have for any player. And that concludes the top 10 list. If you found this video helpful and are not subscribed yet, a sub would be absolutely amazing. Now before I go, I quickly want to show you the tool I used to make this list. It's an amazing site made by this guy from the Lifescale Discord and I really think more people should use it. So first you want to go into the settings and enter your region and then head over to the plant zones tab. And here you get a list of nodes ranked by income per day per CP that updates based on current market prices. And one of the coolest things about the site is this column here. It literally tells you what the best worker is for each node. And if you just want to pick up good notes without investing too much effort, you can just go down this list top to bottom and end up with a decently profitable worker empire. But keep in mind that this ranking isolates the node, so it doesn't take into account any node connection you may already have. And creating a good worker empire is really all about creating node networks from your already existing connections. And this site actually lets you simulate and optimize your entire node network. And as you can see, there's lots more to say about workers and I will be releasing more videos in the future. In any case, that's all I have to say for now and I'll see you in the next video. Take care!